Welcome to the cave. Thank you for joining me today. Hello. Uh, exciting times. Season three, finally here. Superman and Lois. They can see you as Sarah Cushing. Uh, we've been waiting a lot for season three. I've been starting off these interviews yes. with the Superman and Lois cast. Like, it feels like it's been forever. Yeah, no, seriously. It's been interesting because I just did an interview the other day where they were like, we've we've wanted to do interviews with you. And I'm like, wow, that's insane. I never knew just because of how everything is so compacted. And it's insane. But I'm so happy to finally be here. It's amazing. Amazing. Uh, before we jump into uh, to the latest season, you know, I was doing a little bit of research on you. I know you've been still pretty new in the industry. You've been doing it for a few years. But I want to know, like, what made you fall in love with acting? What made you uh, go for it? Ooh. You know, I think I've never seen myself doing anything else. So it kind of just turned into following what I already had inside of me. Mm -hmm. um, but I would go to these. I remember. So my mom was a single mom. And so during summertime when she had to work and we weren't in school um she put us in this drama camp and so my older brother went to a science camp and I went to a drama camp and I just remember having so much fun being able to just let loose all of these emotions and I remember watching a lot of movies as a kid where she was just since she was so young I mean the movies that I was watching wasn't necessarily kids movies it was gladiator yeah. or anything like that I remember just watching the screen and kind of having this idea that I could do it and it's really beautiful that I had that idea when I was five Per se, I know that sounds insane, but when kids tell you that they know what they want to do, trust them because they can. <laughs> what's uh, what's one of the movies that you fell in love with watching with your mom? Oh, I would say Gladiator was one of the first ones that come to mind because it's my earliest memory of a movie. Um, let me think. No, I, I'm, I'm going to stick with Gladiator. I think it's a perfect example of how raw it is in its truth, but also at the same time, it's extremely... Hmm. it's a gladiator it's movie. gladiator <laughs> so yeah i'm a super gladiator yeah amazing is there anybody you look up to into the industry that you kind of like try to watch their craft to better yours mm. i think a lot of my answers have been an older generation of actors but i think nowadays i would have to say um because i think not a not enough love comes from peer to peer whenever it's our age um, but Florence Pugh, I find myself really looking up to. She She's exactly the career that I want to go down, exactly the attitude that I I, I want to have towards this industry. And I think she's just all around beautiful and amazing in the way that she tackles struggles and challenges and just the way that she talks about it afterwards. It's always so positive. And I think that's really important in this industry. So Florence. What's your what's your goal, you think, in the industry? What are you kind of hoping for? Because, you know, you've done the D.C. world now, you, you know, you're mm -hmm. cemented in that. Like, what's the what's on the bucket list? Oh, you know, Marvel. <laughs> um, I think um, kind of just following what comes to me, I think, like trying very different things. The past two characters that are played in 13 Reasons Why, which was the Stella yeah. de la Cruz and this, which is now Sarah Cortez, I think. Um, trying something other than high school and, and and that's further away from me. I think the closest I can get to as myself would be a high schooler because that's exactly what I have played before versus anything else. So I think just just anything outside the box would be fun. Mm. Do you see yourself in comedy world maybe someday? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think sitcom wise um, or film wise, you think? Film. I think would be phenomenal just the way that I, rem I remember watching the behind the scenes of a movie with Melissa McCarthy and Jason Statham and there's a director in the back where like he's just giving them lines and like you have to see them like relax for a second and tune in and not only memorize what the person 500 feet away is saying but also at the same time deliver it in a way that's comedic or just funny yeah. and it's it's I 10 out of 10 recommend watching the behind the scenes of comedic films it's really funny what's indie bitching these days what are you watching what? What are you watching these days? What are you binging? Oh, binging. Oh, I just finished Sandman. Love that show. If anybody can watch it on Netflix, it's so unique and beautifully written. And, and the characters are so beautiful and wonderful. And I have cats and they're going to start fighting in the next five seconds. Hold on. I need to <laughs> take, take, take one. Give me one thing. Sure. <laughs> Come here. Nope. You're going to be in my lap for this. Okay, we're having one over here because they're going to start fighting and we're not doing that today. Um, <laughs> no, I loved Sandman. I think um, I'm going to stick with that. My old, my little brother's been showing me um, some movies and shows and we just watched Enter Galactic. Okay. It's an animated adult film, which I love. I think it's beautiful. I think that animation now breaching off into the world of 
of what it is to be an adult film. I think that it's it's really neat. Yeah. Mm. Would you ever want to do voiceover? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're working on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh Superman and Lois season three. I said we've been waiting for a while. It's finally here. Uh, what's your like what's been going through your thoughts and everything that we're finally here? We've been waiting a while for this. Oof. Just that everybody receives it the same way that we felt while filming it. So I think it's important for at least me that people understand Sarah's story on my own sense, but also at the same time that it's we're tackling such a huge subject with breast cancer with Lois. So mm -hmm. I think the audience and us are kind of intertwined right now and the love that we're receiving and the stories that we're hearing, like it's just incredibly beautiful. So I think that that journey is 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 what I'm a little bit more focused on besides my own just everybody and mm. how's like special the whole, that's whole family is. thing like I said yeah I another guest on they love it uh what do you think makes uh Superman Lois like different compared to other superhero shows though oh I think because we are doing we have two characters that don't naturally exist like um myself for example and Jordan mm. Jonathan's own like it's powers in the comic book series and Sarah Cortez does not exist at all whatsoever I don't know if Kyle Crochet exists whatsoever I know Lana does but um so I think it's just like a parallel universe kind of a thing and also I don't watch a lot of superhero shows so I think that the familial aspect in our cinematography I would like to say is a little bit different we're mm -hmm. hugely based off of inside of our um headquarters it, it, there's a lot of cinematography being pulled from the social network um and I, i'm blanking on the other one but it, it's a lot of those yellows that we see a lot in smallville so mm -hmm. you yeah. mentioned um your character is not in the comics did you find that easier now because you don't have to like go and do some research you could play this character the way you want to oh absolutely Oh, absolutely. I think that that's like the biggest blessing ever because then I have no fans telling me that I'm doing it wrong. Right. Like they could tell me that I'm playing a 15 year old in a way that they wish that a 15 year old wasn't, but it's never going to be based off of a character, which I'm hugely blessed for. Um, but also at the same time would love to chat, like take that challenge down later down the road. Mm. What do you think has been the biggest challenge playing this character? Oh, I think her tenacity and ability to say what's on her mind is both, my aunt told me something many years ago where oftentimes your um, biggest blessing is your biggest curse. So the thing that you love most about yourself can also be the thing that you don't like the most about yourself. And I think in episode two, we definitely, sorry, episode three and two, you see the beautiful dichotomy between that. So you see Sarah's mouth, being able to defend Jordan, but then yeah. at the same time, you see Sarah's mouth against her mother. And I think that that ability in yourself isn't, you can't change it. And when it comes out, it's just the scenario in which it comes out too. And I think that's an important learning lesson for her of when to keep things to yourself and when to use that in order to help somebody or to help yourself. What do you, what do you, how would you describe now Sarah's journey from season one now into season three? How much has she changed, do you think? Oh, I think she, I think in the beginning of season three, she's really trying to hold on to that childlikeness by yeah. going to the party, by lying a little bit, by like doing all of these things. She's really trying to get back to where she was, but she can't because she's no longer that person that fell in love with Jordan in the very beginning. She's been kidnapped. She's watched her mom get hurt. She's watched her family get hurt. Like there's so many different things that she's gone through that she is unable to go back to square one on what she was so I think this season you definitely see how she struggles with that and ultimately what she reveals is underneath the end mm. and throughout the throughout these uh seasons too you know we see some like heavy themes like mental illness uh um, yeah. I wrote down your family loss like how do you navigate through these different themes for like as a performer oh as a performer I just recognize that it's human life and and we all know what it feels like to have a really bad breakup we all know what it feels like to maybe go have your parents go through a divorce or see your parents arguing or any of those subjects that we broach inside of the Cushing family. Um, so as a performer, it's just about 
being authentic in the way that you're playing it. It doesn't have to be true to anything you've experienced or anything that story you've heard, but it's just about in that moment, taking indie out of it and really playing the authenticity of Sarah, which is why, I mean, me watching back those scenes and seeing the way, Solana really slapped me, by the way. Emmanuel really slapped me. So (laughs) doing that multiple times in a row and getting the reaction and then seeing, oh, my favorite scene is when me and Eric are in the diner and Sophia's next oh, yeah. to them and they're talking and then all of a sudden Sarah comes up and you just see like she's like in the beginning looking for her dad and then as soon as she sees her dad she just allows it to break down which is a big step forward for Sarah and and Kyle they they right. did not that relationship at the very beginning was not good because oh yeah of, you know and then season two and then now in season three you see a full circle and also what it's like to be a parent mm-hmm. the the dichotomy of your, your you and your child might really not be getting along but when you your child needs you or as a parent or when you need your parent as a child you got to be there when you when you were reading through the scripts and everything and you found that your character will break up with jordan like what went through your mind with that i gotta know did you were you hurt at first (laughs) i definitely i remember the day of happening and i wasn't able to cry because i was just like me and alex are going to go get food afterwards (laughs) this is not um and also I felt like in season one, there wasn't a lot of moments between us on screen that were us as a couple. So it was a little hard to pull that a little bit. Um, but because me and Alex are close, I think it was easier to get in that mindset a little bit of like, mm. oh, I could be losing this person or there's a little bit of a breakup or anything that's happening. So I definitely think being really close with the people that you work with, especially in our industry, makes it really hard to yeah. do scenes like those because it's like babe we're, I'm gonna see you after work I'm gonna, like, <laughs> we're gonna go get a drink um so I think reading it I was just like oh my god thank god I don't have to kiss him anymore no um I think it was definitely tearful because I we didn't have those many or that many instances on screen yeah. of us being a couple there wasn't any at school like it was maybe us like holding hands or but it mostly had to do with something like oh mm. you can't be my boyfriend today because of this and I so wished that we had more moments like that yeah. um for the audience and for myself so I think reading that I kind of was bummed I was like shoot we don't get to get to those cute little scenes of us in his bedroom doing homework or right. you know riding a truck or teaching him how to drive or him flying with me I never got to fly with the boy uh. Well, uh, how do you feel about that whole uh, like uh, now between like Aubrey and your character and Jordan and all mm-hmm. like that triangle like, like how would you describe that I think that it's something that still lives in Sarah and that she mm. feels immense guilt for that she can't be fake with Jordan because of the fact that she knows that she has to work through that which is such a mature thing for a 15 year old to recognize yeah. but I think her heart is so heavy and her heart is so needing to figure out because she feels horrible she did she she and then she she did something that she shouldn't have but also at the same time that she should have for herself to figure out what those feelings were um and didn't really have a lot of time to figure that out and so I still think that it's one of the contributing factors in herself where she's trying to get back to season one Sarah of just happy and meeting a boy for the first time and there's some things going on in her life but it's still that like innocence Mm-hmm. so I think she's I, really trying to figure it out I know you can't give us spoilers and everything but what can you tease about your character for this season Ooh, <sighs> you want to know what's funny um filming for eight months you forget what happens and then you rewatch episodes and you yeah. go oh yeah we filmed that scene so <laughs> things that I can spoil for you without actually spoiling anything wouldn't be much because I don't remember half of what we filmed because we 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 film like this and it's yeah. it's 10 days almost two weeks and then we're good do you film uh episode by episode or do you or do you do um different scenes for different episodes because I know some shows jump around we do different we, we do all one episode at one time. So okay. it's 10 days of one episode. And then um, we sometimes have what we call tandem days. So we would have two sets happening at the same time, two directors. Yeah. Um, but it would never be anything crazy. Um, cool. So you mentioned Manuel slapping you and everything. But how do you like yeah. describe now that relationship between Sarah and Lana? 
Ah, it the episode ends with the episode ends with Sarah going to Kyle. And mm -hmm. I think there was a beautiful moment between them on the truck, which allowed Sarah to feel comfortable going to Kyle. It's just that moment right before of I can trust you. And also she's keeping this huge secret from them about or from him about John Henry. And it's not about Lana and John Henry, it's about the mm -hmm. fact because it's Superman's secret. Um so I think there's so many secrets that Lana and Sarah have to keep together. So they will have that bond. But at the same time, there's such a trust that's lost when a parent hits a child. And so it turns into a little bit of a moment where Sarah has to rightfully so take time for herself to figure out what she's feeling, where she wants to go from here. And she didn't get to hear the apology that her mother gave. Emmanuel performs this beautiful monologue at the very end of episode three, where she talks about her mother and how she doesn't want to be like her mother, which is a hint into Lana's life that she grew up with a mother like that. And she doesn't mm -hmm. at all want to be with a mother like that or be a mother like that. So I think it's really important to recognize that Sarah didn't get to hear that. So Sarah needs an opportunity to hear Lana's side of things in order for that yeah. trust to be rebuilt. You mentioned Kyle. I had Eric last mm -hmm. year on the show. He must mm -hmm. be like one of the nicest guys. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? He was great when I had him on last yeah. year. Amazing. He's, yeah. He's my dad. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. What's the best advice he gave you? Oh, my God. Again, our... he's my dad. There's an endless amount of advice that that man mm. has given me. I think more so I need to upkeep the oil on my car is one of the best advices that he's he's taught me for sure. And um, just don't date. <laughs> <laughs> right? I think I think Eric's too too big nose for me. No, we um, there's just I have a whole column of advice that he's given me, but I think keeping oil in my car, if I were to date someone, date someone from like F1, which is Formula One. Yeah. Which oh, we, yeah, he loves his we'll racing. watch together every now and again. Yeah, racing cars. It's just me and Eric. That's all we talk about is cars and apparently boys. But mm, there you go. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. What do you hope for the audiences will remember the most, like about your performances, if your performance on Superman and Lois? Oh, I just hope that people think it's authentic and that people can relate to it, at least kids my age, or sorry, kids Sarah's age. I just hope that they can recognize and see themselves in it. Also, when it comes to questioning your sexuality or whenever it comes to not doing the right thing, because I think that's something that Sarah struggles, that's something Sarah struggles with a lot is not feeling like she's done the right thing or not doing the right thing in other people's eyes and then dealing with the backlash of that. So I, I, I think just being true to yourself, whatever mistakes that you make and how to move forward. How many uh, episodes are we expecting this season? 13. 13. That was last year, yeah. too. It's, it's always 13, right? No, first two seasons, we had 15. And then this uh, season, we got 13. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, episode three recently aired. So mm -hmm. we have a few few more to go. People are still excited about the series. Now, what's next for you now? Any projects you're allowed to tell us about that you're working on? None that I can tell you about. That's the best that you can't. <laughs> it's always a good thing when you can't tell about. Yeah. In the uh, how do listeners and viewers find you on social media to keep up with you for future mm -hmm. news? Sorry? So how can the uh, listeners and viewers find you on social media to keep up with you for future Ooh, uh, future man. news? Yeah, me on social media. Uh, it's Indy Navarrete, which is N-A-V-A-R-R-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. They're going to start fighting again. Yep. We might as, yep, this is going <laughs> to, yep. Just end it like this. End it with recognizing that they're going to start fighting again. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I want to yeah. thank you. I want to thank you uh, for giving me a few minutes today. This was great, and uh, if we get a season four, let's get you back on or any other future projects. Oh, of course, anytime.